Welcome back. In just a few hours from now, that caravan of migrants planning to march through the San Ysidro border crossing as President Trump warns no one will be allowed entry until claims are approved. Former U.S. Army Captain Jason Piccolo is a former ICE supervisor and Border Patrol agent. He joins us now to react. First, Jason, thank you for your service. You've heard thank this you. news. It's going to be a first test of this migrant caravan trying to come across illegally at that port. What do you make of it? I think it's going to be a mess. I mean, that's one of the busiest land ports we have in the world. And it's also going to disrupt commercial and legitimate pedestrian traffic as well. Jason, it's hard to imagine what else the Trump administration could do from manpower to the asylum claims to literally sending the cl clearest message you can. But do you believe that there is more to be done to solve what is clearly, according to CBP officials, an unprecedented caravan? Yes, there, there has to be something done. Now, I mentioned we should have a port court where we could have immigration judges and asylum officers at those ports of entry. But definitely not San Ysidro. That is the busiest port. Now, we could move the traffic east to Tecate, which is only 15 miles from San Diego, and it's a very rural area. Do you believe there is talk this morning that there is possible cooperation between the Trump administration and the incoming Mexican government, Lopez, Lopez Obrador, who was a, uh, a pro-migrant uh, uh, candidate, but now indicating that there could be cooperation. It would involve essentially increasing the number of asylum uh, applications processed to port of entry in exchange for Mexican officials keeping those migrants in Mexico. Do you believe that is significant and do you think that will help? That is absolutely significant. We have to have cooperation with Mexico. We also have 10 consulate offices we could work with Mexico in to uh, process those claims down away from the border as well. Jason, when we look at this caravan, there are others behind it. I spent some time in this original one. Many more have come. The officials say there's some 6,000 possible plus people just in Tijuana now. Do you believe that how this is handled now, this weekend and the coming days, will be a sign as to how the rest of the caravans and these Central American countries will, will behave? Yes, definitely. Now, if you look back in the 1990s, there was an influx of hundreds and hundreds of aliens running up the freeways in San Diego, and the government implemented Operation Gatekeeper to stop that flow of traffic. Now, we need to stop this traffic before it gets to the United States, i.e. work with Mexico. And you, having been a Border Patrol agent and an ICE agent, one of the parts of this story that gets left out, we just had an incident last night at Yuma, Arizona. Agents coming under assault, are you concerned that this is going to heighten the assaults on our own agents? Absolutely. Right now, the caravan is filled with migrants, from what we believe. Now, if you introduce other bad actors in there, there's definitely going to be violence at the border. Mm. That's a troubling uh, forecast. Jason Piccolo, thank you very much, and thank you again for your service. Thank you. Better, better than this, huh? Ten News has confirmed the San Diego Police Department is on standby to assist Custom and Border Protection agents. Joining us tonight, former San Diego Police Officer Ray Shea. He's been a commanding a SWAT commanding officer with the San Diego Police Department for 25 years. What are some of the physical barriers that you're seeing out there right now? 
Well, there's a lot of challenges. Now, first of all, they have a lot of people that are trying to force their way in. But mm -hmm. the way they have it set up, that they're doing the best they can. But there are, obviously, with the large wall there, it's, it's, a, it's a very substantial block. And the deployment of the tear gas was absolutely necessary because it actually stopped them from continuing entering the U.S. So um, it turned out, you know, sufficient to stop what the threat was. Okay, and we're looking at that tear gas right now, and we were also hearing that they had deployed rubber bullets in this. And you had brought up a good point earlier: is that there are children, there are there are babies in this caravan. So what kind of challenges are agents up against knowing this? Well, there are significant challenges, especially with darkness coming as well. Mm -hmm. But if you have smaller children, if even adults, if you're going to shoot rubber bullets into a crowd, you have to be very specific where they're targeted. And obviously these federal agents have a lot of experience, and a lot of practice, a lot of training, how to handle these type of situations. So they have the proper equipment and to look at they closed the international border and no one was injured. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's a successful operation. And what we're looking at here um, in that video was the, when they broke through the wall. So we're seeing that tear gas use, the rubber bullets. But what is the next step? Because we're seeing agents, uh, migrants are throwing rocks, projectiles at them. And we saw in video here, too, where they're kicking their shields. Well, the, the next step is if a crowd is overtly violent and they're causing damage or they're hurting or injuring people, that you want to move towards the crowd and disperse the crowd. Obviously, it's a unique challenge because you have an international border you're facing and that our uh, property line in essence stops at a certain point and you got a partner with uh, Mexican police, border patrol, all the different agencies on both sides of the border. And I can imagine right now they're all in a room figuring out what, it, what are we going to do tomorrow? How are we going to make sure we don't have to close down the international border? So there's a lot of very smart people working very hard at both the federal, state and local, CHP, San Diego PD, uh, Chief Neslite and city officials are figuring out, hey, what's the best way to handle this? And as night closes in, we saw in the last 20 minutes or so, we were watching in the newsroom with you, they were adding more of that razor wire uh, right where you see the San Ysidro Port, that sign right underneath there. They just added more. Well, some of the reasons they do that is a large crowd, when they break up, you have 300, 500, 1,000 people. It's like water. So you got to find a way to stop all that water and all those gaps because one person can get through about 24 inches. So the razor wire will actually act as a physical barrier and that way it's safer, it's a deterrent. And then with a strong uniform presence, you're sending the message that we're not going to allow this to happen. And safety, of course, the main priority for both sides out there tonight. Yes, I mean, I was thrilled to hear that no one was injured on either mm -hmm. side. You closed down the busiest border in the world and they did a great job. Rishi, thank you as always for your expertise. Thank you for coming You're in tonight. Welcome. Some breaking news coming out of the area of Tijuana, Mexico. This borders Southern California. This, as the news has come out about whether or not an asylum deal has been made with Mexico. These pictures you see here from moments ago, Hans Nichols there with this group. And Hans, we were just getting off the air. And then this happened, which you saw and you witnessed, and you, you saw them begin to move. Where were they moving to and why was such energy? Oh, well, David, the situation has changed dramatically in the last 20 minutes or so. What's happened is that the migrants that were prevented from crossing the bridge, they wanted to come in, uh, go over the bridge and get to the U.S. border, which is right there. Instead, they ended up coming and they're here and they're here in this bridge uh, here that's trying to cross this river. As you can see, it's quite a dirty river. The smell of sewage is quite strong. So what you have here is migrants trying to make and literally storm the border here. Now, right there is the San Ysidro point of entry. That's the normal back and forth where it goes. There's a bridge above that where they normally would cross, but because that was blocked by Mexican police, they are trying to cross this way. 
I have to say there's still a lot of obstacles between these migrants and the United States. Yes, we're looking at a wall there that seems to be about 20, 30 feet high. That's the normal border crossing. The people that you see walking there uh, that are walking along the catwalk, they are just normal people going back and forth on the border. On the other side of this embankment, on the other side of this berm, there are federal police. We saw riot police, and we also saw some U.S. So uh, service members, U.S. soldiers earlier. This is an official point of entry. What the migrants that we've been talking to all morning have been saying is that they're fed up with their conditions inside of the camp and that they want to make their so asylum claim in person. They essentially want to surrender. 20 minutes ago, it was a stalemate. Situation has changed dramatically. There's still hundreds of migrants coming down. Here we just see them spilling over, and they're trying to get up and above. Now, it's very difficult to do crowd estimates, but I would say easily more than 1,000 have crossed. That's the situation it is right now, David. We'll get back to you when we get a little bit more. Just to be clear, we are still on the Mexico side right here. On the other side right there, that is the U.S. border. It's maybe a football field away. You can also see right here a drone. I don't know if we can pick that up. That gives you a sense of just how militarized the border is. When I look above me, I see maybe half a dozen drones that are kind of monitoring this situation. What's unclear is if they stand any chance, these migrants, of penetrating the border, crossing that wall on the other side, because this is a hardened, fortified border. This is the part where there actually is a wall, and it, I would be very surprised if they're able to get through that. What this move will do, David, is it will bring attention to what's happening here, and that is you have more than 5,000 migrants in a camp. They could no longer tolerate their, their conditions, and they're trying to get across the border and make those asylum claims in person. David? Uh, so, Hans, uh, as the reporting has been, and please correct me if I'm off here, that they are processing only, what, about 100 asylum applications a day. This and the tension, you were showing me earlier yeah. some of the Mexican police. There's also the, the forces that are on the other side on the U.S. border. How are they going to mitigate this, uh, if, if you will, escalating into potential altercations? Because that's a concern. Yeah, well, there were some confrontations earlier between riot peace police uh, and these migrants. So they weren't terribly violent, but there were definitely clashes back and forth. The, uh, the federal police trying to hold their ground in full riot gear. What ended up happening was that the migrants found a different way around them. They slipped around them. And as you can see, this is a massive waterway here. It floods if there's a lot of rain and the dam gets released up above. But you can continue to see uh, them, them heading up there. So to answer your question, how this resolves itself, it's unclear. One possibility is that the 5,000 migrants that were inside the camp make it to basically the base of the San Jacinto point of entry. That happened a few months ago, and that put pressure on the U.S. government to process those asylum claims faster. You ask how many are processed a day. The number we hear is between 60 and 100, but it's hard to get a precise figure. What the Trump administration wants to do is process all of those asylum claims inside of Mexico. If that's what they, if that ends up being what the ultimate deal is on December 1, that means these guys have only five days to make their claims in person on U.S. soil. Richard? Hans, you've been there. Uh, give us a sense of the migrants themselves. Are, are, are we seeing uh, many uh, uh, mothers and children, uh, men versus women, old yeah. versus young? And, and, and what's the state of, of them right now? Are, are, they, are they clean? Are they able to get uh, the well, services they need? Well, they're bedraggled. Uh, they do have water. They do have some showers that they can share. You know, he, this is about a 30 degree embankment where they came down. And when I was coming down, there were several mothers with strollers. We just saw a father come down here. We could swing out. This gives you a sense. That child there looks to be about two, about two years old, being held uh, by a gentleman, potentially his father. It's very hard. And then up here, we have some more strollers coming down. It's really hard to do a full census yeah. of just what the makeup of these migrants are. Hans, you do how, see how a lot of children. You also see a lot of men. Yeah. And, and, and Hans, what's the sanitation level? Because that's, that, that would be a question, right? As they are moving so many hundreds of miles now, they've been out uh, uh, move, moving north for so many weeks. Uh, well, there are showers. There are porta potties uh, We hear, heard some reports of porta potties overflowing. Uh, it's, you know, they're sleeping on the ground. They're sleeping, and there are 5,000 people on the side of a junior high baseball field in the United States. That's not a lot of people to share that amount of space. They're cramped in there. Uh, when you see a lot of the aid workers go in there, and even some journalists, they're wearing masks because they don't want to get sick. Uh, but in general, 
they do have they they have they, there is the opportunity to get meals sometimes they're charged sometimes they're given away and there is running water but i have to say now it looks like most of these guys the, the flow has slowed down here but what these guys are following the flow, they're basically going over an open sewer here the stench from this river is pretty overpowering and they're walking over we've seen some people slip in the sludge here on their way in they're going over this and trying to get uh, trying to get up there. So to answer your question, uh, yes, they do have they, they do have access to showers, but 5,000 people living in that close quarters, uh, they're bound to be some sanitation issues. Richard? Yeah, so well described. Uh, great to have you there. NBC's Hans Nichols there in Tijuana, Mexico. at the border, members of the migrant caravan using brute force to kick down the fence and push their way through to the U.S. All traffic lanes heading into the U.S. at San Ysidro, the world's busiest land border crossing, are still shut down right now. Hundreds of migrants rushed the border trying to break through, even pushing past a police barricade. In one point, the U.S. border agents shot tear gas at migrants to keep them away from the fence. CBP closed the border crossing in both directions for pedestrians and vehicles. The pedestrian crossing, crossing reopened just within the last hour, and southbound lanes are slowly starting to reopen. 10 News has four reporters on the ground tracking every development of this breaking international news, as well as an expert here tonight to break down the tactical response the U.S. is using. We want to get started with 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle at the Oak Tai Mesa Port of Entry, where it was the only Way anyone could get through for hours this afternoon, Cassie. Yeah, absolutely right. We're here at Roll Drive in Via de la Amistad, which means pathway of friendship. And as you can see, it's calmed down a little bit. It was just so crowded about 15, 20 minutes ago. Lots of people coming through. We actually have a lot of people over at the bus station. If we pan to the left, we can show you that over there. Um, we are a little bit east of the 905. That was the only way that people could cross the border, according to Caltrans. And the next closest is Tecate Port of Entry, about three hours away. Now, CBP shut down San Ysidro out of caution after videos like this of migrants claiming to be part of the caravan rushed the border. Migrants clashed with Mexican police, fighting, and then with U.S. Border Patrol, who used tear gas to disperse the crowd after a large group broke through one of the border fences. Migrants threw rocks over the border at U.S. Border Patrol. Others continued to try and enter the U.S. illegally, and the U.S. feared the migrants would try to walk through the San Ysidro vehicle port of entry where the cars were at a standstill for hours. It has been shut down since 1130 this morning. The migrants said that they did this to demand that their application for asylum be processed. All of this causing fear for those living and visiting Tijuana. It was a mess, like everyone, like a lot of people everywhere, uh, traffic. It was really hard to get here to the border, uh, but once I... Like I arrived, I, it was easier for me because I have sentries, so it was not as bad for me, but uh, over there, the city's a mess. Yeah, it's chaos. 
Sophia is a junior over there at UC Berkeley. She's thankful that she's back in the U.S. and will make her flight tonight so that she can get back to campus. And of course, we're going to continue watching the situation out here in Otay Mesa. Cassie Carlisle, 10 News. Hundreds of migrants from Central America tried to storm the fence that separates Mexico from the U.S. They'd reportedly broken away from a peaceful march near the border bridge and tried to climb over the metal barrier into the U.S. The migrants fear they'll be kept in Mexico while their applications for asylum are... President Trump remains critical of Mexico and Central American countries, tweeting it would be very smart if Mexico would stop the caravans long before they get to our southern border. Yesterday, the White House did not deny a Washington... Post report that the administration is close to a deal with Mexico. That deal would require asylum seekers to wait in Mexico while their application is processed. Mexican officials now say there's no agreement of any sort. President Trump has already threatened to shut down the U.S. border, which could impact immigration, of course, even more. Now, this announcement comes after the U.S. Border Patrol units threw tear gas at migrants who tried to storm the fence that separates Mexico from the United States. The group had reportedly broken away from a peaceful march near the border bridge and tried to climb over the metal barrier into the U.S. Meanwhile, U.S. Customs officials say traffic has been brought to a standstill at the largest border checkpoints between San Diego and Tijuana.
And this was a scene earlier today when hundreds gathered on San Diego side in support of the caravan. Tennis reporter Laura Acevedo has that part of our coverage. Laura. Yeah, Vanessa, and we are up here at the San Ysidro Port of Entry where we have seen customs agents standing here watching the Mexican side of the border nonstop, but about 600 people marching in support of the caravan. They took off from a park about two miles away from here and then marched towards the port of entry. I want to show you some video of that. They gathered at Larson Park where members from more than 20 groups spoke to the crowd. Police then escorted the group as they marched on the street holding signs and chanting. The groups calls themselves the San Diego Migrant and Refugee Coalition and during their speeches at the rally, the organizers said they disagree with the militarization of the border, asking people to consider why these migrants are fleeing their countries. Now, others showed up in support, saying many of them are immigrants themselves. It could, it could be me, it could have been my sister, it could have been my mom um, marching. My mom did come across the border. My mom did walk over the mountains um, to come here to give me a better life. And it was a lot of times life or death for them and for us. And the group did end their march at the San Ysidro port of entry. Everything remained peaceful. Reporting live in San Ysidro, Laura Acevedo, 10 News.